So let's go ahead and add an additional channel of graphics. We can now see that we have two different channels now displaying on our program monitor. Our program monitor is pretty much going to display a live playback of our graphics, kind of as a kind of working as a functioning as a, as a program preview. So we can kind of see how these graphics are playing out all live. So for example, if I wanted to add additional graphics to this particular channel too, then we can begin to add this, bullet, this ceramic bullet list, for example. And we can see now that we have a separate graphic layer rendering out on channel two. I can play something very quickly on channel one and see that I have now a graphic playing through channel one. Switching over to channel two will then allow me to play a second graphic on channel two. Do note that both of these graphics remain live. So kind of um, expanding on the on the feature of having a channel or different channels for your broadcast through Tatterler Live is that we have different methods of output when it comes to uh, pretty much transmitting what it is that your title life will be preview, uh, showing off on your feed. So we have, we're here, no monitor, which is pretty much the de default as to, I don't want to transmit any of these as uh, sources. Then we have NDI, which is pretty much the growing trend of using your, your sources over NDI. It's convenient, it's seamless, and anybody can incorporate it if they have a local area network that they, that they can operate with. The way that the channels work over NDI is, let's say, for example, I have a graphic playing over channel one, or I have an active channel one, meaning that it's simply existing in my project. We will now be able to retrieve channel one as an NDI source. Channel two will also be behaving as its own individual NDI source, meaning that if you have, for example, a software switcher that is capable of receiving NDI feeds, then you can bring these two separate channels as their own individual source. Going on to the next type of thing that we could possibly do is HDMI. HDMI pretty much allows you to build out a, a capture monitor that you could use for chroma keying or luminance keying. So we can see here that we have three different options when it comes to generating a color that we can key out, whether it be black for the luminance or green or blue for chroma. And we can pretty much um, interpret from this that depending on the type of switcher that you'd be using and what kind of key you would be using to pretty much have your graphics play through the switcher, then this will be where you would manage those settings so that it, 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 it pretty much interacts the way it should be with that switcher. The other setting we have here is since my machine is currently lacking an SDI card, but if it did, you'd see that option pop up. Pretty much what the way that SDI works with our software is every single channel that we see here is a pair of SDI lines. So for example, if I wanted to do channel one over SDI, lines one and two for my SDI cables will be pair will be my pair for my channel one. So those are my key and fill pairs for channel one. Then for channel two, I will have pairs three and four to be my key and fill, key, uh, key and fill pairs for that. So technically you'd be using four lines of SDI so that we can achieve the graphics for channels one and two. So pretty much it's in pairs of two the way that you could align it to the way the channels are displayed on the interface. The other ones that we can see here are watch folder PNG sequences and direct to OBS. The new one is virtual webcam. So virtual webcam does only operate through one channel. So for example, I would need to have only one channel of graphics to operate through virtual webcam. And just like kind of the way that NDI works and SDI works is, or HDMI even, is simply playing out these graphics will then populate them onto my play, uh, onto my screen and onto my feed. If you wanted to, for example, um, and then I will go over into further detail, bring in a live video source directly into your channel, then you can overlay all your graphical elements above that live video source, whether it be a webcam of yourself, or a, an, an audience that you want to then transmit or like a conference room, then you can overlay that with graphics and send that over virtual webcam. If you've used our other product Vividcast, it's pretty much the same output method. It's just that now we've um, incorporated that value proposition into now using Tire Life 5, which is something that Tire Life 4 lacks the virtual webcam.